Welcome to this fast chat exploring a topic uh, when minutes count, speed and accuracy during incident response. I'm Alex Waro, a contributing editor for Black Hat, and joining me today is Matt Cawthorn, the VP of Cybersecurity Engineering at Extra Hub. Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Alex. It's great to be here. Let's get to it. So I think my big question is, what are you hearing from your customers about their data forensics and incident response needs at this time? Well, obviously, there's two real dimensions to the answer. One is, it's very clear that things are remote now. We've got a, a sort of decentralized workforce in many environments. That's a net new um, dynamic for everybody. And so we're wrangling this sort of centralized access. And there's a lot of concerns about how to manage that centralized access and the, the implications of a distributed workforce. This one's obvious. And then maybe surprisingly, um, projects are still going. And the projects that were intact before all of this hit the fan, are still intact today. And in fact, there's more and more back pressure to relieve with these projects. And so one of the interesting things that I've frankly been pretty surprised by is an increased velocity in these projects, especially lately, I would say in the last month and a half, when we've got a little bit of a line of sight to easing and, and kind of coming back and um, a, a line of sight to 2021 and with some confidence and the projects are still intact and we're really rolling and ramping up, but it's all happening remotely. Uh, virtualization mm -hmm. and especially cloud is a big part of that. A lot of projects are moving to cloud when they would have otherwise been in a terrestrial data center setting. Nice, yeah. So I, what I really want to dig into is incident response. And sort of, Can you talk about what the pros and cons are of dealing with logs and network data when you're conducting that kind of incident response? Yeah, um, the way we see it is there's really three main components. We'll probably touch on all three over the course of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, two of them are um, host side on the, the asset or the infrastructure component of interest, which one would be logs, and we'll go into that. And then the other would be agents, which would be an endpoint detection and response solution or next gen mm -hmm. antivirus. Both of those things are self-reported. They rely on the systems or the infrastructure that is logging. They rely on the configuration of those logs. And therefore, since they're self-reported, they can be manipulated or evaded. Mm -hmm. Now, just to be clear, this isn't me or ExtraHub saying that logs are bad or endpoints are bad by any means. In fact, we believe that they are critical components in the cyber triad, which are which is comprised of network visibility, logging, and endpoint visibility and, and response. Makes and so sense. they're mandatory, but we all have our own constraints as a data source for the security operations practice. Mm -hmm. So from a logging perspective, one of the big, you know, one of the big conditionals there is that it's very, very unstructured data. It needs to be preemptively configured. You need to know what you want to log before you log it. And then an adversary can pretty easily manipulate, bypass, evade, or just remove the logging facilities themselves. And so there, there is a little bit of a, you know, if I'm an adversary or if you were an adversary, one of the first things you would want to do is cut the proverbial cord on the security camera if you're about to break into the into the house, right? And so right. Um, that's one of the big constraints. We've all got our own constraints. The network has ours too, but and that's why collectively they work the components of the triad work very well together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it begs me to ask, like, so when we're talking about that kind of network data, what are some examples of network data that can that can help during forensics and incident response? Well, the advantage of network data is that it's purely observational. It's also one of our constraints to be to be blunt. You know, with, so we we have to be we have to be privy to the network that's or the traffic that's traversing the network rather. And it's it's observational and it's as close to behavioral ground truth as one can get in the enterprise. Uh, one of my one of my teammates, his name is John Smith for real. His name is John Smith. It's a good and, name. Uh, he says, I don't know, I can't predict what the next compromise is going to be, but I can guarantee you it's going to involve two hosts and a network between mm -hmm. them. And so, to the extent that you have you have fluency of the protocols, the the languages that are being spoken and communicated across the wire. You have scale capabilities and you have um, breadth and depth of your sort of processing power. You can actually handle the traffic at modern scale. Um, mm -hmm. You can get a lot of transactional behavior data that's really, really difficult to get via traditional means. 
That makes sense. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit before we go about what specifically ExtraHop or VLX does to help with sort of data forensics and incident response situations. Well, so on the forensics and response side, it's it's a this is a super super important question because in our on the network side in the NDR category, network detection and response, for for too many we would submit the R means the R means response like we're going to take an action in the in the network. Mm -hmm and shut a host down or quarantine it. And those are very valid use cases, but for us in RevealX, the charter is quite a bit broader than that, where response to us means supporting the actual operational concern of the incident responder and informing their decisions with data and with context and with information as they respond to a given incident. Whether or not that involves quarantining a host, is is that's important, but the actual information that you need to gather and the context that you need in order to adequately respond and remediate is really where the rubber meets the road for us. We we consider that to be a data analytics problem and that's how we approach it. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting approach. Um, I think it's great stuff, Matt. Thank you so much for your time and thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure to be here.